So the next step that we're going to do is also UI related. It's displaying the ship UI. This is kind of going to be a little bit similar in that we have a prefab set up with some positions and things so we don't have to worry about this stuff. But instead of rendering it into the screen space, we're actually going to take this canvas, which is going to be screen space, and convert it to world space, which is quite a common thing to do, especially if you want to do health bars or things uh, UI placed around the world somewhere. So, so to do this, I'm going to take this ship UI prefab, which is also in the UI prefabs folder, and drag it into the hierarchy. And what we'll notice is that we have a canvas in screen space already set up, as you can see here, and as you can as you can already see here, and as you can already see, positioned in the uh, in the in the the game view like so. Um, and each of these uh, elements, of which there are four, are using a font asset called one ship UI. Now we have one screen UI, so if I just change one of these to one screen UI, it's then going to use the same settings, not the vertex color settings, which is why it didn't have gradient on it. But you can see here that these four are using the same font asset, it's different to the uh, screen space, uh, to the lap time asset. And it means I could do things like I can change the color and you notice that all of them will change alongside it. So it's quite handy to have the font assets properly set up so you can change one and all others using it will change the same style. And this one, it's got a little bit, so what we've done here is rather than go a little crazy, we've got a face, we've dilated the text which means we've kind of expanded it a little bit. So you can see here you can actually t change the text dilation. Uh, that's a beautiful thing that sign distance field rendering of text does for us. And the other thing we've done is actually added a subtle glow. So this is kind of like an emission around the text. So this is the text currently and it's a bit basic. But adding that glow adds a little bit more to it. And because it's going on the back of the ship, it's going to feel like it's a bit more world space and it's actually feel like it's actually part of the, um, the scene, part of the setup. So to do that, I'm going to take this text element, or take the canvas, and change it from screen space overlay to world space. And it will now disappear. That doesn't mean that it's t turned off or deleted or you know corrupted or anything like that. It basically means that you can actually see it up in the top corner here. It means that it's taken this UI or taken that screen space UI and it's now massive in the game world. So if we raced around and looked up, you'd actually be able to see the text floating in the sky because it's now one massive world space element. Now we don't want massive text floating in the sky because this isn't like a VR project, which is actually kind of quite fitting. We want it to actually apply to the back of the ship. So even though um, this UI isn't going to be interactable, so we don't need an event camera, we're going to do that anyway, partly because that's an optimization thing. Um, if we, yeah, it's just generally a good practice. So if you don't have an event camera set up, the canvas is going to be pinging to find the camera pretty much every frame, and it's an incredibly expensive thing to do. So to fix this, um, and it's not related to this game, because we're not going to be able to click this UI, but it's handy to have anyway, we can click the little target. We only have one camera, because remember, Cine Machine cameras aren't actual Unity cameras and do it, set that up like that. So it's not actually needed, but it's good to point out anyway, and then uh, people will have less overhead or less uh, processing going to just finding a camera every frame. So now that we have the ship UI, and it's a world space object, we can actually position it around in the world. And actually, if I select the game view and have the ship UI like this, is the zither. So you can see it's actually an object in the scene somewhere. Now we don't want it to be positioned just anywhere, we want it to be positioned on the back of the ship, specifically um, on the back here with one bit of text here and one bit of text here as well. So we can take the ship UI, and because it's now a world space object, we can actually child it to the ship's body. And we're gonna child it to the ship's body so that as the ship's body rolls, the UI, uh, UI will go with it. If we just chart it to the main ship, the yaw of the actual ship's body, uh, the ship will move, but then the UI will stay the same, and it'll look a bit weird, and instead now it's gonna move alongside it, or move in parallel to it. However, this text is still absolutely massive, so we need to, uh, we need to um, shrink it down. So to do this, I'm just gonna go to the scene view so you can actually see the UI changing. Going to select the ship UI. Uh, we already have all the numbers worked out, so we're going to use zero, not naught, point two nine, minus one point eight. And what this is going to do is it's then going to position the canvas to the kind of the back of the ship. It's still absolutely massive, and we're going to obviously uh, turn this down. But it should be fine. Rotation is zero, 
uh, no, rotation is actually 50. Zero, like that. So we now have it generally sort of attached. So I could actually go into play mode and you see this big text that's flying as a massive spoiler behind my ship, but that's not, that's not ideal. So the next one is to set the scale down. So we could either do this by taking the scale tool and then scaling the text down, um, like so. So we can keep scaling it down, scaling it down until it's into the right position, the right size, but instead we already worked out these values, so it's 0 0.002, and we now have the text scaled down, still looking very crisp, partly because we're using TextMesh Pro and it looks super nice, attached to the back of the ship, both on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And the very last step is to go to the game manager. You'll notice that it's looking for a ship UI to update, and it's basically the same as lap time UI, in that this uh, ship UI has a script that has the references, and it's gonna update what's your current speed, what current lap you're on. And clicking the target, or the selector, we can then choose the ship UI. So there's that. So there's a couple of steps to that. One is to take the ship UI prefab and bring it into the scene, kind of like how we did with the lap time UI. The next one is to take the ship UI and to set its render mode from screen space overlay to world space so we can position it somewhere in the scene so it's not rendered to the screen, it is now an object in the world. Next thing was when it's world space is to set up the event camera. It's very, very quick, very simple. You just, we only have one camera, so that's fine. <coughs> Next one is to take the ship, oh, to child it to the ship body and then to set the position, the rotation and scale. So rather than being a massive UI that's not out of position, it's actually scaled down and rotated to a good spot on the back of the ship. And then to go to the game manager and hook up that lap time UI. And one thing I'll show you before you go do all that is another thing that TextMesh Pro supplies is with their big library of um, different type of shaders, is that we have distance field, distance field surface, which means it's interactive, it can be um, affected by light, so if you have point lights and directional lights and things like that. Surface as in surface shaders. Yeah, um, and distance field overlay. If we set this to distance field, basically it's now, because it's positioned in the scene somewhere, um, it will be affected by say like post-processing and particles, you can actually see the uh, distortion on the back of the ship is actually affecting the UI, that's actually kind of cool. But as we race around, if the ship banks, it's then gonna be clear, uh, covered by bits of the ship, and also post-processing can affect it. So you could leave it at that if you really wanted to, but we want UI to be readable, otherwise there's not really much point to it. Um, so we can take the UI elements, and then set it back to a distance field overlay, which means it's gonna render, even though in the world, on top of all these different effects so the text will actually be readable. It's also a very common workflow to be aware of when working with world space UIs. You'll notice we didn't start with a small UI and try to make changes or anything like that because that's really difficult to do and it's hard to get things to line up and nothing is ever quite the way we want. We generally start with a very large UI, even in overlay mode, and we set up how we want things positioned relative to each other and, and just basically this giant canvas, we kind of move stuff around and anchor it, and then we just scale the whole thing down and place it. It's much, much simpler than starting with something very small and trying to move fractions of a pixel and stuff like that, which is actually quite difficult. So start with something very large, and then just scale it down to be the size you want and placed in your scene. So if we're going to play mode to see the end result, we then have our speed. Hang on. We then have our speed on the left, and you can see that the, uh, the ship, uh, uh, is it the vehicle movement that's applying that? Yep. Yeah, the vehicle movement is then applying the speed. And then on the right, you'll notice that it says laps two or three because it triggered that first uh, debug lap. And I could have really just reversed back and forth, but I kind of want to show you that as the ship pulls out, you'll notice that the UI is then attached to the ship. And it's still generally quite readable, but it's quite a nice, uh, nice effect that you can have, rather than just displaying it to the edges of the screen. If we go this round now. Don't crash. All right. So you can see here, yeah. Cool. So, if we go over to the Steps, these are them. <laughs>